Nation. On the foreign scene, Luciana braces for hurricane as storm grows in Gulf of Mexico. And in sport, Falconets head coach confident of team's performance against Japan in knockout stage of FIFA on the 20 World Cup in Colombia. Now the details. I am John Omwaka. <laughs> As the, day, as the two day national women's conference organized by Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials, Council, and Governor Babaji Sowulu has challenged women to be more innovative with the knowledge gained for a better society. Governor Sowulu pledged that his administration will continue to allow women thrive in governance and encourage them to see themselves as agents of change for the renewed hope agenda of the President Tunubu's administration. To be actualized. All of the insights that you have gained from all of the sessions and all of the things, you know, the inspiring lectures, and take it back, like I said, and not be constrained by any form of limitation, not be constrained by any form of boundary, and to make meaningful change in your communities, in your household, and in our nation. Also speaking at the event, Nasrawa State Governor Abdullahi Sule, who was represented by his Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Development, Aisha Ibrahim, commended Council for the National Women Conference aimed at regional integration for progressive change. Partner to state that women constitute a significant segment of our population and perform a unique and indispensable role in ensuring the growth and development of societies. The opportunity of this occasion to challenge our women across the country to emulate the example of the women of Lagos State in establishing and sustaining a forum such as this to promote growth, progress, and development of their communities. In her closing remarks, wife of the Lagos State Governor, Chairperson of Council, Ibijoke Sanwolu, urged women to embrace home farming to ensure food security, be prudent in spending and reduce affluence as the nation is going through difficult times for a better economy. Mrs. Sanwolu also noted that the knowledge gained at the conference would enhance the development of the nation. It is essential that we embrace the reality of the present economic situation, not only in Nigeria, but globally. The era of extravagant lifestyle is over. We must adjust, prioritize what truly matters, and lead by example in our homes and communities. Please, let's reduce the affluence. There's a lot of people out there that are feeling the pinch, even you. Debutaries in attendance included the wives of the governors of Bernu, Oshu, Okun State, wife of the Inspector General of Police, wife of the Minister of State for Health and Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goal, Princess Adejoke Orilokwe Adefulire. Certificates of appreciation were presented to all sponsors of the event, tagged Friends of Council, while a minute silence was observed for all members of council who lost their lives in the last one year in a sober reflection by all participants, both physically and virtually. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has called for the use of biodegradable bio and combustible packaging materials by food processing companies as an eco-friendly option for a sustainable environment. Governor Sawulu made a call at a smart packaging conference held at Victoria Island, Lagos. Speaking on the theme, unlocking Nigeria food security, implementation of smart packaging to reduce waste. The governor was represented by the Commissioner for Commerce, Cooperatives, Trade and Investment, Paula Shade Ambrose Bendebem, underscored the role of food packaging and processing industries in driving economic growth with a charge on the industry players to shape the future of the industry to an eco-friendly one. He stakeholders to embrace sustainable packaging technologies with urgency, stressing the need for cross-sectoral collaboration to manage plastics responsibly 
and drive innovations that protect the environment. In his presentation, the managing director and CEO of the Lagos State of the Lagos Waste Management Authority, Loma, Muiwad Badegeshi, highlighted the immense global challenge of food loss and waste, which he noted was a significant contributor to environmental degradation and resource wastage in regions like Africa, where food security was still an issue. Badegeshi outlined the proactive steps of Lagos State government to addressing plastic waste issues and to promote sustainable packaging solutions, including the recent ban on single-use plastics as part of the state's broader strategy to reduce negative environmental impact. The Loma bus urged Lagos residents with waste management-related issues and complaints to call Loma to call Loma toll-free lo numbers. 08000 Loma 080000052962 and 617 or visit www.loma.gov.ng Lagos State Materials Testing Laboratory Agency LSMTL has collaborated with the Lagos State University, LASU, in a bid for comprehensive engineering education towards applicable technological advancement in the built industry. General Manager of LSMTL, Olayinka Abdul, said to enhance the materials test processing in averting building disasters within your job at Dagri Aziz, there is a need to erect a materials test edifice within your job campus of the institution, noting that it will also create an, an opportunity for more learning experiences of undergraduates in the built sector. While reiterating the impact of the initiative for economic development, Abdul stated that the industrial collaboration will augment knowledge exchange between academia and the construction industry for better practices, emphasizing the shared commitment of both institutions in setting the stage for future developments that could have lasting impacts on the infrastructure of Lagos State and beyond. On our part, the Vice Chancellor of Lagos State University, LASU, Ibiemi Olatunji Belo, noted that the laudable initiative will enhance the experimental digital aspects of engineering towards uplifting the standard of education. Lagos State Tax Force has carried out a major anti ocado operation at Antikeni bus stop in Ikorudu and Berger bus stop. The agency's chairman, Adetayo Akerele, said the operation, which targeted areas restricted by the Lagos State government, resulted in the confiscation of 64 motorcycles which had been operating on the restricted routes, thereby flouting the ban on the activities on all highways in the metropolis. Akerele said enforcement exercise as part of the ongoing efforts by the agency to maintain order and ensure compliance with the state government's ban on Okada operations in designated areas. He reiterated the government's stance, warning Okada operators to desist from flouting the law. Now to the rest of the stories. The Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, says 35,000 officers will be on hand to provide security alongside 8,000 others from sister agencies for the Edo gubernatorial election on September 21. Egbetokun stated this in Bini at the Independent National Electoral Commission stakeholders meeting ahead of the election. He said the Edo State Security Network, which has been banned, will not be part of the election. Egberto concerned security would also be deployed to man the waterways and the entry and exit of the state. He called on voters, party agents, and other stakeholders to conduct themselves peacefully for a successful poll. Former Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, has charged a co-club on 50 years development, of development plans that will confront the challenges ahead for sustainability. Fashola gave the charge at the 50th anniversary lecture of the club, themed a co-club at 50, the role of social clubs in social engineering. According to him, the theme deserves utmost commendation, saying matters of dormant common interest of 
Matters of dominant common interest of today are dynamic. Fashola who highlighted the roles of social clubs, charged the current executive members of Echo Club on initiatives and programs that would make public office holders accountable, give insights into government plans and policies, societal issues, and climate change, among others. In his address, Chairman of the Day, Aki Kekeriakum, urged the club to build a think tank that would touch light the activities and happenings within the state. In his remarks, the 22nd president of a co club, Razak Amodu, said the club's activities go beyond socializing, assuring that it will continue to make valuable impacts that would improve the society. The event featured documentaries and award presentations to the guest speaker, Babatunde Fashola, and chairman of the day, Aki Kikiriako, among others. Now to foreign news. Luciana is present for Hurricane Francine as the storm grows in power, in power over the Gulf of Mexico before its expected landfall. The National Hurricane Center, NHC, said Francine, strengthened from a tropical storm into Category 1 hurricane, is expected to have reached Category 2 when it hits Luciana. Meanwhile, Luciana neighboring Mississippi have declared states of emergency in preparation for landfall. Francine will bring four to eight inches of rainfall, potential tornadoes, and damaging winds to much of central and eastern Louisiana. Residents in eastern Louisiana, Mississippi, southern Alabama, and western Florida were warned of a life-threatening storm surge and urged to finish the hurricane preparations. Now sport. Head coach Chris Danjuma is optimistic the Falcons will give their best against Japan in the knockout stage of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup Finals in Colombia. The Falcons will, in Bogota, take on Japan, one of the strongest forces in women's football globally, after finishing second in Group D with six points from three games. Speaking ahead of the clash, Dan Jimenez said the girls have worked very hard to get to the current stage, noting that he is proud of their efforts. The clash between Nigeria and Japan will hold at the Estadio Metropolitano de Teco in Bogota, where the Falcons play their first two matches of the group phase against Korea Republic and Germany. The match is built for 2 a.m. Nigeria time on Friday, 13th September. And as our news at 9, but just before we go, slow down at road junctions, intersections, and pedestrian crossings. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. X, a Traffic Radio 961. Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sawulu administration organized a mentorship seminar for over 1,000 youths on the theme, Agripreneur, Strategy for Wealth Creation? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. As the two-day National Women's Conference organized by the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials Council ends, Governor Babai de Sangula has challenged women to be more innovative with the knowledge gained for a better society. The Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egberto Kun, said 35,000 officers will be on hand to provide security alongside 8,000 officers from sister agencies for the Edo gubernatorial election on September 21. We also told you that Lucia is brazen for Hurricane Francine as the storm grows in power over the Gulf of Mexico before its expected landfall. And in sport, 
Head coach Chris Tanjima is optimistic the Falconites will give their best against Japan in the knockout stage of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup Finals in Colombia. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at Traffic Radio 961.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Zainab Adebeshi. I am John Omwaka. Thank you very much for listening.